it got her to video. Then we had a trial, and, and we heard the evidence, and we saw the evidence. Turns out the child wasn't... So broken. this is he Court TV talking evidence. about this case with... Um, that initially, and then what's that little girl? The child was never burned. Alexis, somebody? So a false confession in the case here on Court TV, and from there, the state's case went completely downhill she was found the, uh, I don't, guilty the ducks what is that and, and they came to the conclusion oh. that she was stillborn, or there was reasonable doubt in the case i don't know is so that oh Richardson, man those uh, look like you know big headlines what in the world are through. those animals uh, turns out the jury did look not at that any of it is, you know the case we've are those recently, ducks one in new mexico involving a young woman this, uh, get this out of here alexis avila in new mexico and it's a weird, you know, oh, it's a weird, it was like little ostriches or something that just, now this case, yo, <laughs> you know, tragic many years, the child survived, there were some people, some, look at these birds, who happened to go to those dumpsters and find the child, yeah, these birds, like they just tied, they just had a long but day, the mother got 16 years, yeah, they look like they so tied, <laughs> that's a trip, oh, <laughs> you don't see birds like that every while. That's a trip. That baby survived. Tonight's story also so, in Mexico involves a young woman, Alexi Chavisa. Uh, um, this, this is Court TV talking about the the case with this girl who's not only there are reports coming out that um, Alex Alexis Alexi Trevizio, whatever, and her um, like she has classmates now saying that she knew she was pregnant. She even named the baby. These are just reports that have come out in like articles and stuff. And then some of her schoolmates saying that, you know, she's a complete narcissist, which I can believe because her mother's one. If you saw the video of her mother trying to prevent her from being arrested, you would probably say the same thing. You would be like, her mother's a complete narcissist. Demanding that the officers tell her what charges her child has been charged with after she went to the ER went to the hospital bathroom in the ER gave birth to a whole full term baby and then put that baby in the trash can and her mother has the audacity to you must tell me what she's being charged with I'm her mother I still have the right to know no what you are is a horrible grandmother who should be asking her about what did you do with this baby? Where is my grandbaby? Because she's 19 and she's a legal grown adult. Who should be charged like one? This isn't the first case of a teen having a kid and then trying to put the baby in a trash can or a, a, a dumpster. Or try to flush it out of toy. You've had mothers do some horrific things. So called being young and dumb. In the name of being young and dumb. 18, 19 years old. Can lay up and have sex with somebody with no condom. But then when they give birth. Then you all of a sudden. Oh I didn't know what was going on. I'm just a teen. No. No, no, no. No, no. You, you're not going to sit here and give that excuse now. After almost 40 weeks of gestation. Are you kidding? And then the mother's like, where did you put it? She didn't even seem angry at the girl having a baby or even being pregnant. She's sitting there more so in like, where did you put it? She's not even recognizing the baby to be a human being. Where are all, here's my question. Where are all these people at that are so anti-abortion? Where's the outrage from all these so-called anti-abortionists? You don't want people to have abortions, but nobody's outraged at this 19 year old having a baby and putting the baby in the trash can while she's in the hospital, in the ER, in the bathroom for almost 20, over 20 minutes, almost 30 minutes. And was caught on camera going in and out the bathroom. Plus have pictures showing that she was pregnant. And then you have now classmates schoolmates people who are saying she told us she was pregnant she knew she was pregnant y'all have to remember these kids in high school all they do is gossip that's all kids know how to do at that age 
18, 19, 17 years old. All they do is gossip. Information spread across a high school faster than it spreads across information inside a house. <laughs> you can't you can't have some I, I actually gave a, 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 a personal story of mine where my freshman college roommate had a baby in the bathroom. And guess what? That spread like wildfire. People didn't just know at Spelman, they knew at other campuses across the state of Georgia within hours. It's just certain things you just ain't gonna be able to hide and keep to yourself. And that something like that is not one of those things. These kids in that high school are not making that up because they can't, you, you can't just say, well, it could have been a vindication issue. No, why? Nobody wants to hear of you having a kid and then putting the baby that was born alive, took a breath and put the baby in the trash can and then it died from asphyxiation. Nobody wants to hear that. That is horrendous no matter whether or not you're 19 or 29. Nobody wants to sit and hear that they know someone who was pregnant, tried to, in some cases, is now you got reports coming out where she didn't hide at all. She had told even a couple of people she was close to that she was pregnant, named the baby, and now it's trying to make it seem like she didn't know and the baby wasn't born alive and was stillborn. I want to know where all the people are who are so anti-abortion. I'm going to need all y'all to get just as equally outraged about a child being born at full term and put in the trash can and not try to make excuses for it. Don't make no excuses for that. I, I'm going to need you to, to maintain that outrage you have when you're trying to convince kids not to go and have abortions, grown women not to have abortions. But yet and still, yet and still, somehow we should have sympathy for somebody at 19 years old doing all this because reasons why it's got to be the most insane hypocritical thing ever the hypocrisy in that is laughable and staggering why i don't understand why there's not more outrage than what it is with someone who's 19 a grown adult i don't care if her mama want to treat her like a baby she's not a baby that happened with another girl in New Mexico. Or, yeah, New Mexico. Where the girl, 18 years old, threw the baby in the dumpster. I don't know if y'all remember that. But the girl put the baby in the dumpster. And some dumpster divers found the baby still alive, thank God, in the dumpster. And guess what? That girl was charged with attempted murder and got 16 years in prison. Her name, <laughs> ironically was Alexis as well. I just don't remember her last name. Newell? I don't know. Uh, don't get me to lie. Y'all watch this court TV video. It, it talks about all... It talks about this Alexis trivial girl case. The Alex, the other Alexis case that threw the baby in the dumpster. She was 18. In the New Mexico. What the hell is going on in New Mexico? Who the governor in New Mexico? You might need to get a handle on these teenagers having babies in New Mexico and then discarding the babies like they're trash or something. You need to get a handle on that. Y'all need to pass some legislation. And you gonna have a you gonna have a baby and you 18, 19 years old. Take the baby to a safe haven hospital. There's a thought. These kids, oh, they're going to college. They're smart. They don't have any issues. Well, they need to make smarter decisions. Take the baby to a damn hospital, a safe haven hospital. Drop the baby off and tell them you don't want the baby. You, you relinquish your parental rights to keep living. But don't put the baby in the dumpster or leave the baby in the trash can of the bathroom in the ER hospital. You got to be bold to do something like that. Where you are in a place where you can get the help you need, even if in the moment of you giving birth, you can still scream for help and not be looked at as a monster that you are. Because the baby was born alive, took some breaths, and you put the baby in the trash can, and it died from asphyxiation. Now you got classmates and schoolmates coming out saying, no, she knew she was pregnant, and she named the baby. She just a narcissist, which I can believe because her mother's a narcissist. And if her mother keeps obstructing, guess what should happen? 
to the d prosecutor and the DA of New Mexico, guess what you should be doing? Charging her mother with obstruction and locking her the hell up. Charge her with obstruction. She'd have already tried to obstruct with the execution of an arrest warrant. More than likely, she is going to be obstruction, obstructing in the further investigation of this case. And if these kids, especially the ones that are 18 and over, are willing to provide a statement of some sort, willing to provide a statement of some sort regarding this case, to attest to her character, and to the fact that if she was aware and she knew she was pregnant, even took the time to name the baby that that shows that she knew what she was doing when she went in that bathroom and gave birth she can't keep saying she didn't know she was pregnant that's a lie from the pit of hell i don't even believe that and i don't ever have to lay eyes upon her i don't have to, i I'm, i don't even believe that that's a flat out lie girl you knew you were pregnant stop please stop saying that don't let the first thing that come out your mouth i didn't know i was pregnant that's a lie. You knew you were pregnant. Just be honest about it. Did you know that you were giving birth? At least be honest and, and say that. I didn't I didn't know I was in labor. How about that? That's a better excuse than you saying, I didn't know I was pregnant for 40 weeks. Just say, I didn't know I was giving birth. Start with that. Because that to me just makes more sense. Even if you're lying about that. That just makes more sense and it's not so, so dumb and devoid of logic. Even in the moment where your body is going through labor and you're going through the birthing process, it's never too late to ask for help. That is the problem that these 18, 19 year old kids, all these people that keep doing this, don't realize. In that moment, when you realize that you are giving birth, something is coming out your body, someone is coming out your body, a baby is coming out of your body, whether you like it or not, and in that moment, you can start yelling for help, call 911, I think I'm giving birth to you, I need some help, y'all need to send everybody, send everybody, send all the police, send all the paramedics, I want all the paramedics, the EMS, anybody and everybody you can send, hurry up, y'all hurry up, Please track my phone. Get my coordinates on my iPhone. Let me give you the number. Please have somebody track my call. I might not be able to give you the address of where I am right now, but please track the uh, coordinates on my phone. Do you see how, how different that any judge and jury would take that? Do you understand how different that sounds versus, I didn't know I was having a baby and it wasn't breathing. What? But see, if you try to get some help, there's a lot of 911 calls. She called like four times saying, y'all need to hurry the hell up. There's a baby coming out of my body. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. And I need some help. And then you can still decide, take the baby to a safe haven hospital. I'm going to drop the baby off. I'm not even going to try to pretend like I want to raise the kid. That way you can't be blamed for aborting it. And you can't be blamed for trying to kill the baby or to try to lead a baby somewhere in a dumpster or attempted murder, any of that, you can at least get some help but be honest about it. Just be honest. It's so stupid to lie that bad. It's not the hospital's fault. It's not the medical uh, practitioner's fault, the, the nurses and the doctors that were on call in the ER. It's not their fault. They didn't fail this 19-year-old. That's a complete probably many narcissists in my opinion like her mother no they didn't fail her she failed her she failed herself and she still sits here and tries to make excuses to keep this 19 year old from taking accountability and responsibility you know what my mother told me and my my two sisters she told us she said if you all get pregnant you 18 years old you're a grown adult you're gonna have to get a job and take care of that baby don't expect me to do it. I'm going to be a grandmother, but I'm not going to raise your child for you. That's it. <laughs> the end. Now you you all understand that's something that you can just teach your kids. You going to have a kid in 18, 19 years old because you weren't smart enough to put on a condom. Guess what's going to happen? 
Uh, you got to take care of the baby. You, you on the hook for raising this baby. You need to figure out what you're going to do in your life to get a job and, and come, come up with some income. Most parents, on average, might still let you stay at home with them. You got to help pay some bills. You can't do that for free because no one owes you anything. Stop walking around like you, you know, were born with a, a silver spoon in your mouth. You're going to have to have some responsibility. You're going to have to help pay some bills, you know, and the parents should definitely make you do that. You go and get pregnant 18, 19 years old. All right, you're going to stay here. You're going to pay the water bill, the light bill, and the gas bill. Plus, you need to make sure that the baby has formula and milk and all this other stuff. If you got to go get assistance or whatever until you get enough money coming in to do more on your own, then you can do that. Assistance is available. I'd rather you get assistance than to just let the baby starve. Get WIC. Get food stamps. Get what you need to help take care of your kid. But get a job. Get some money coming in. If you're going to go to school, talk with your parents about it. Don't force them to sit here and be the uh, parent to your kid that you decided to have. It doesn't make any sense. So, whatever you decide to do, talk to your parents and people that are going to help you. And then you can still maybe go to school. You can get grants and, and, and funding to help you go back to school as a working, as a, a, a student in school that's a parent. They got grants for people who want to go back to school that have kids. Nothing wrong with that. Get, get some assistance you need to help better yourself and, and build yourself up. It might not, it's not going to be easy. I ain't going to say might. It's not going to be easy. It's coming from a woman who's divorced with two kids and a master's degree and still looking for a job. It's, it's not going to be easy at all. You're going to have a lot of trials and tribulations in your life, but it's all about how you handle that. It's all about realizing that in this reality, on this planet, that life is real. So you're going to have real situations and things that are going to happen that might not be favorable to you 100% of the time. And it's unrealistic for any parent to raise their kid to have them think that they can just do whatever they want, not care about anyone else, and then get away with it. Just like this girl's mama. Obstructing while the cops are trying to execute an arrest warrant. Why would you think that that would be okay? Why would you think that's okay? That's not okay by any means. If nothing else, you should have said, okay, now hold on, let me tell her, go get some clothes on. Can she bring some tap? All that unnecessary conversation y'all having with this woman, y'all wouldn't have done that if it was anybody else. In an average situation, that would not have happened. And then you stand there, woman, and you tell your 19-year-old grown-ass child, you about to go to, to jail. They're going to book you in because you gave babe, birth to the baby in the bathroom and you left my grandbaby in the trash can. So I'm going to need you to understand, mama still love you, but I'm not going to support you when you're wrong. Right is right, but wrong is wrong. I cannot support you when you're wrong. So this is what's about, what's about to happen, and I'm going to come down there and figure out what's going to go on, but I'm going to have to let them take you. That's it. There's no getting away from this. That's not how this works in life. No one else on earth is able to just get birth, put, put a baby in the trash can in the ER hospital, in the bathroom, on the, on the camera, on camera, going in and out the bathroom, knowing you were pregnant, and then get away with it. No one else will be able to get away with it. You ain't either. So you gonna have to, you gonna have to face these consequences. I'm gonna need you to, you know, if you are gonna cry about it, it's okay to cry about it because it sucks. But you got to be a woman about it too. It's time to be an adult. So here's how you're going to have to do this. You're going to go down there. They're going to take a picture. They're going to book you in and do all this other stuff. I'm going to come down there and then you call me when they're ready to give you a phone call. And then you can talk. And then I'm going to make sure you have an attorney. But that attorney need to get smarter than that. So you need to understand that this ain't the only girl in the country that has had a kid and tried to dispose of the baby by dumb means. Meaning putting the babies in trash cans and in dumpsters. So you're going to have to come up with a better defense. And it can't be insanity either. Because guess what the prosecutor and the DA going to do? 
they're going to start asking these other high school graduates that knew this girl that are 18. Do you mind testifying and providing a statement at least? Give a sworn statement. You don't want to come to court? Give a sworn statement. Because all that is going to start building up to her character. It's going to start to shape how people start to see her. And y'all got to remember when you're talking about a 12-member jury here. Let's think about this. The facts, the evidence, the laws, and then just logical reasoning. All come into play when this 12-member jury makes a decision about whether you're guilty or innocent of anything. So they're going to have to put it to, if I were in the jury, I would want to know, at least because I understand science, I understand the predicates to determine whether a human being is alive. Like what happens to the body when a baby is born? What are the signs of life when a baby is born? What are the signs of when a baby has died or when a, a human being has died? What happens metabolically? What happens with the cells? What happens with when a baby is born and there are signs of life when it comes to the tissue and the lungs? I would want all of that established because science says so. There's just certain things that just fundamentals and facts that you just can't, that's not argu argumented or debated. Science is one of them. I think most doctors would agree that signs of life would include oxygen being in the, the tissue cells of your lungs. I think most people, you know, who understand science and then the uh, people who are experts in the field, like a doctor or a medical examiner who has a medical degree, would be able to test to that as an expert that this is sign of life. This is what happens to the body. When a baby is born, you take in air and oxygen. That oxygen is in the tissue uh tissue of the lungs and this is how you can tell this is what it looks like underneath a microscope be meticulous that way there is no confusion or discrepancy of what happens to the body when a baby is born and takes a breath and then be meticulous when it comes to determining how long was the baby alive that's science all of that is proven with an autopsy We've had centuries of science documented in place regarding physiology in the human body and human anatomy. And there's just certain things that we just have to understand to be a fundamental fact. Breathing air and what happens with the oxygen in the lungs are just some of those fundamental facts that we just, we can't dispute everything. Because centuries of science and biology and human anatomy have pretty much solidified that information. So I would want that well established so that me and the other 11 people are all on a one accord when it comes to this science and then describe the autopsy, what was discovered. And then just as an added measure, make note of what happens to the human body just so everybody in the jury is clear. Every person on that jury is clear of what happens to the body in the event that there's an asphyxiation or that oxygen leaves about like what what happens metabolically what happens with the tissue cells um in the lungs particularly because that's that's where you're going to be trapping those oxygen molecules it's in that in the lungs so what happens with that if the baby died by asphyxiation what should you expect to see in the autopsy that is what is is to be established from the medical examiner so that every person on that jury can be very clear on that. And then you talk about things that can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt that might not be in the autopsy, but still fundamental facts and findings, science, factoring in the statements from the schoolmates, classmates to provide their testimony, all of those things. And it needs to be clear. These statements from these classmates and schoolmates, if they're going to give a sworn statement, y'all better be clear in detail. Try to remember dates and times where y'all had conversations with this little girl where she made weird statements about being pregnant and naming a damn baby. Make sure y'all state that clearly. Where were you at in the school when this conversation occurred? 
that'll help you to kind of remember like okay what was going on when she said this to me because i remember she said this oh that's right we had chilling in practice we were standing on this side of the gym she was wearing this shirt and these shorts and th those details make it very clear when you provide those statements so be clear with that i remember she said this she did that she then after that she started practicing she was doing you know cartwheels and all kinds of other stunts that you do in cheerleading so she knew she was pregnant she kept doing cheerleading she started back doing practice after she told me what she wanted to name the baby like i'm just giving an example but let that be how meticulous your statement is if you provide one and personally if you know that you heard her directly say this to you that she not only was aware that she was pregnant but she named the baby y'all think about this baby think about the, the life of this baby that no longer exists because of her don't be afraid to come forward and just provide a statement you can provide a statement and you don't have to testify or anything like that most of you won't even be um you won't be subpoenaed or anything so you're not gonna be in legal trouble but provide a statement if you're 18 years old, you don't need your parents, you know, permission or anything unless there's some factors that require it for you to still have to get parents to state yay or nay. If you feel fearful of it, but you want to help, you know, perhaps maybe, you know, um, talk, to your, talk to your parents about an attorney just to make sure that, hey, I don't want no retaliation from this. I don't, I don't want nobody to say or do anything to me because... You know, I don't want to come to court, but I do want to give a statement because she did say that she was going to name the baby and here's the name of this baby that she told me. And she's lying when she said she didn't know and it wasn't breathing or anything like that. Did she lie when she said that? I was about to try to turn, but then you got a car driving on the wrong side of the street and that was just a head on waiting to happen. I ain't going to do that. People drive so dumb. Why Why is a car driving in the wrong direction? I literally was about to turn and was going to be greeted with a pickup truck driving on the wrong side of the street. I mean, that would have been a head-on accident. People, so, Some people are just so stupid. Then they would have been mad like, oh, he, you saw me driving. Why are you on the wrong side of the street, you goofball? Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm glad no one turned while they were doing that. Because, I mean, good Lord. Anyway. So, if you're afraid of that, I just... Uh, God. I, I just don't understand some people when they're driving out here. But if you understand, like, that, the, what, the, what this really means. And the fact that it's dangerous to even... For something that, like that to happen, and then for, you know, you got somebody that's 19, not even 18, 19. It's not like she just turned 18. She's 19 years old. But then she turned around and went to prom. Pretending like nothing else went wrong, all, all is well in, in life. I'm good. Never mind the baby. I, I just, I, what? This girl is literally existing like, eh, whatever. I was pregnant. It is what it is. I had a kid. I put it in a trash can in the bath. Like, that's how she acted. She went to prom. Are you kidding? She went to prom. It's absurd. And then thinks that she can just go to college. And not have this be handled and dealt with. It. Are you, is this real? <laughs> this is ridiculous. But like I said, I expect people to be more outraged. I expect more outrage and more, you know, reporting and wide criticism of it. Because, hell, I mean, if you're going to sit here and, and go out of your way to punish people for wanting to have an abortion, then you should definitely be upset and angry at this 19-year-old adult. Knowing she was pregnant, going to the bathroom in an ER hospital giving birth knowing that the baby had breathed and showed signs of life 
thought I guess she could defy autopsies in science for some reason I guess she thought she could just defy that like you know like an autopsy would not be done I don't know why she didn't think it would be or her dumb mama but yeah no they did one I don't know why you all thought that that was not going to happen but that's to be expected because you left a baby in the trash can and then tried to cover it up and then the mother is doing nothing but obstructing this entire time as opposed to teaching her daughter this is part of life and handling responsibilities and it's just not something you just you you can't treat this like it's a you know like this isn't a big deal this is something you that has to be handled and addressed and you might not like most of this but this is what's going to have to happen because I would be equally irate if it was any other 19 year old that has done this and there's been plenty of, of examples of it where the other girl in New Mexico who threw her baby in a dumpster and it was found and thankfully was alive she got 16 years in prison for attempted murder so why should this girl be any different why, why? You can say that about every 18, 19 year old that gives birth to a baby and then tries to throw the baby in the trash can. That something's going on mentally and emotionally. You can say that. You can say that about every every teenager that has a kid. And they're not prepared for it. Or they don't want to face the reality that they're they're giving birth in the in the midst of them giving birth. That could be said about all of them. It's all about how they respond and handle that situation, though. You can't go behind that and make it seem like you didn't even know you were pregnant. You don't think some people are going to start coming out saying, no, they helpful knew she was pregnant. A good mother would teach her, this is not, uh-uh. This is not what you're going to say and do. Because this was my grandchild. You could have just told me you were pregnant. Obviously, the mother just didn't want to know because... I, I would look at that girl and see that she's clearly pregnant. I don't know why the mother act like she didn't know her daughter was pregnant, 19 years old, walking around that house with that baby bump that she had. Especially knowing that kids gossip. High schoolers gossip. They talk a lot. You ain't hear no conversations while she was on the phone. Her trying to name a baby or anything. Like none of that came up. Your friend, her friends didn't come to you, or her friend's parents didn't come to you and say, Oh, is she pregnant? Nobody came to you all and said anything. Not one parent of your child, of your daughter's uh, classmate or schoolmate came to you and said, Is Alexis pregnant? If she is, is she having a baby shower? When is she dead? Nobody came and asked you those questions at all, not once. No one ever asked you if your daughter was pregnant. When did she do? Or, you know, is it a boy or girl? When is the due date? Are you having a baby shower? We would like to attend. You mean to tell me no one asked you that, woman? Girl, kick rocks. I, I, I hope, like I said, I hope that many, 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 many people come forward. And say, no, we, we, we asked her mother about this. We asked her mother, hey, when is your daughter, you know, going to have a, is she having a baby shower or something? And the mother said X, Y, Z. Just like what's happening now with the, with the little girl, with uh, her classmates and schoolmates. She got classmates and schoolmates that are finally speaking up saying, um, no, she knew she was pregnant. She's a narcissist and she actually named the baby. That's you see what happens when you try to lie. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Why lie about it? So you know it, it doesn't hurt to provide statements, and then you know you can be considered a credible witness. You can give a statement where it's credible, especially if you make sure that it's detailed, and you can give vital vital information. You know it will be considered credible. And if it's, it's a difference between one or two kids saying something versus like 12 of them, that makes a big difference. 12 people that can give an account and say pretty much the same thing about this girl, it's definitely going to be credible because all of them can't be lying. 12 people can't be lying. You hear what all that? 
So. Trevisa, um, she gave up in a hospital, but not like in a hospital room with doctors, in, in the bathroom. That's where all this happened. And we're going to show you some video tonight of, of everything um, that we know from, so the crazy. Camera, from the body cams of the responding officers, what people you have to um, That was traumatizing for those doctors and nurses, too. Ones. And the, so the hospital staff was just traumatized, especially the cleanup, the, the uh, EV tech, the environmental services tech. That, that's traumatizing for them. <laughs> Nobody is prepared to see nothing like that. I don't care. Even if it does happen, you're still not prepared for that. That's so traumatizing. How could you be in a hospital and be pregnant and somehow run off to the bathroom? birth by yourself and the child doesn't survive you know prosecutors investigators believe this is a murder uh the defense not agreeing uh as, of course as, they as don't agree really i mean they're, 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 they're getting paid to not agree how could it happen so let's start by going through the, the video that we have from from this day and it's, it's bizarre we started at they're showing her going in the bathroom um, in and out i've seen i've Alexis shown that video as well into the bathroom then we go through a timeline of that. Mom walks up to the bathroom door. Okay, so that's like a minute. Here's later. what's annoying. As a mother, the only thing I would have said is, "You've been in here for five, ten minutes. I don't know what's going on, but you got twenty seconds to open the door, or I'm gonna have them come and unlock it. And whatever you're doing, you about to get caught doing it. You see how that go? That that's that's what a real mother would have said in any situation." You in the hospital, people gonna automatically think something is ser seriously going wrong, like you done passed out on the toilet or something, you know, or you done really gone into distress, heart attack, stroke, aneurysm, anything could have happened, and you in the bathroom for more than like three, five minutes, you're not even not taking a poop, so anything could have really happened. So that's why, as a mother, I would not have. Uh, uh you've been in here five minutes already. You okay? Okay, well, what's going on? Because we in the hospital now. You talking about back pains and all this other stuff. Something could have really happened. This ain't the time for you to be saying, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. You're here in the hospital in the ER to get help. That's why you're there. To get help medically. So if you go to the bathroom in the hospital in the ER, and you in that bathroom for like five, ten minutes, People gonna automatically assume something seriously went wrong here. You're in the hospital to get help. So why why would you just take her word for it when she said, "No, I'm okay, I'm fine." Nope, you got five seconds to open this door. Oh, I'm about to go get these people to uh to to unlock it, or I'm gonna kick this thing in myself, and then it's gonna be whatever it's gonna be. And obviously, your mom's gonna you know. Checking out of what's going on. Where are you? Why aren't you in the room? She was admitted to the hospital for, for severe back pain that she was. Admitted for that? You get admitted for that? No, I'm there to give you some pain meds and dis discharge. She was bright. I don't know if she this is where I come from. That's what happened anyway. Her mother didn't know. I can tell in you. In Atlanta. Sure. <laughs> um, hey, y'all, here's some pain meds. Like yeah, I give you a prescription. We're going to discharge it. Mom checks on Why don't you get your IV? Again. So now, Alexi's been in there you know, 11 minutes at this They won't. Die. This on average, because so, of that of back pain. They may do an ultrasound to determine if it's a, something going on your gallbladder, your liver. What are you doing? So once they rule that out, sometimes they don't even start your IV fluids for that. Here's a little pain meds we'll give you right now. Some some Tylenol three or Motrin or something. How you take it by mouth, and then they discharge it. The end. I ain't never been admitted on back pain to a hospital. She's worried. I'm sure she's a little confused. I had two kids and I had C-section. What's going on here? And I never got admitted for so no that's, back pain. That's all never. Now you flash forward almost the world. to 157. And this is when Alexei leaves the bathroom with the doctor and, and a staff member. There, there you see. She, yeah, this is. But no baby. Huh. She's just leaving. She's going back now. So all of that happened from 138 to 157. All that is happening. 
and people are going back. Okay, we're going back to the room. What, 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 what's, now back we to the back, to the back, the back, the back. To 2.25 a.m. And a back. cleaning woman back, 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 back. Uh, brings out the trash can, and now she's calling for help because in the, in the trash can, it's the baby boy. This is crazy. And the so and the woman, mother the mother of the nineteen year old grown woman. It's like the grandson that was just born is just uh, you know like a lint on a piece of clothing item. Oh, you get that lint off? Oh, okay. Put the lint in the trash. Oh, okay. That's it. That's how she's treating this. Like like the baby was a piece of lint. The discovery is made. I want to see so much outrage from all these people who so hate abortions and stuff. An Please be outraged over this and in numbers and to the point where you're having protests and you want legislation changed. I can't imagine what that was like that moment yep. for them. This is where you need legislation at. You want to pass legislation and laws, Supreme Court justices? Let it be on these 18, 19 year olds that think they're privileged to be able to have a whole pregnancy to term. Give birth and then put a baby in a trash can or in a bathroom or in a dumpster or wherever. Try to discard the baby like the baby is a piece of lint. And then think they're not going to face any legal consequences whatsoever. To the point where the attorneys are trying to blame the hospital staff talking about they failed this 19 year old grown ass woman. Pass legislation to stop that. What is going Damn on it. here? It's, it's confusion. It's, it's How can you not be angry? Over? Are you kidding? What they are seeing and what has just happened inside of a hospital. Jesus Christ and that that could have been avoided. She could have just said, "Help! Help! The baby's coming out of me, the baby." Now, you've got Why was that hard to do? You've got a, There's a baby coming out of me. I need all the doctors. Like, what just happened here, folks? Talking about Jim it's, it's extremely You all understand what? Simple, Stop hard. it. Young, young I got them wrong my first pregnancy while I was in labor. That didn't make me want to put a baby, my son, in the trash can. What the hell? Y'all better leave them all out of this, damn it. Because you about to mess up a whole lot of stuff for a whole lot of women going through labor in the future. Because a lot of people who ain't got kids call themselves legislation. They'll be trying to pass laws to keep women from actually having pain meds and literally be inhumane. Now you gotta go through labor. Now you can't get pain meds anymore. Are you out your mind? You better leave Demerol out of this. Many different levels and layers. I got Demerol. I had to have a C-section, and I didn't put my son in no trash can. The devil is a lie. This is what y'all need to be passing legislation. What is happening? Two girls in the same state, New Mexico. What the hell y'all doing in New Mexico? What is going on in New Mexico? You kidding me? Chabu. Um, she went to the bathroom. She was in there for quite a while. Kept knocking on the door. Finally got her to open the door. And there was blood in everywhere. She was cleaning it up. So we took her back to the room. Yeah, this dude is so, he's so upset. And one thing he said, this particular nurse uh, said that, I thought he was a doctor. He was a male nurse. Uh, we need more male nurses like him in the field. But he said, she didn't even give me a chance to save the baby's life. She took that chance from me. She robbed me of the chance to save the baby's life. And that's that man that hit home. It brought tears to my eyes when I first heard that. That goes to show that this hospital, this facility, did not by any means fail this 19-year-old grown-ass adult. They didn't fail her. She robbed them of the opportunity to save this baby. She robbed the medical staff of the opportunity to save this baby's life, to help this baby. She robbed them of that opportunity. Now I hope the prosecutor and DA use that. Let that be in your opening argument. She robbed the medical staff, the nurses, the doctors of the opportunity to save this baby's life because she knew that this baby was being born 
and she decided while in the ER hospital bathroom to lie and say she's fine after being in the bathroom 20, 30 minutes at a time. And then she decided, I'm just going to put the baby in the trash can. I don't care if the baby was born alive or not. I'm just going to put the baby in the trash can. This is, this is where you start. This is how you start off your opening argument with that. Because you gotta, you gotta, you gotta understand how mal malicious and cruel that was to not even give the baby a chance. I want that to be an opening argument. If I were on the jury, I would want to hear that in the argument too. I want to hear a lot of things, but that's one of them. Had the lady come to clean the bathroom. And then she put another clean liner over the top of it. Oh my God! So they look, when they look this is so it's so distressful. It's so distressful. Who Lord, y'all? Oh man! All right, y'all. Make sure y'all tell y'all kids y'all love them at night. Give them a hug and kiss. These little babies, man, they they helpless. They 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 defenseless. You know, you you think this baby asked for that? This baby didn't ask for that. The, the baby didn't ask to be born into this to where. The mother doesn't give the medical staff the opportunity to save his life. And then to do all of that and try to flush everything off and clean everything up. Knowing what just happened. If you're in a state of shock, you're not going to be able to clean up nothing. Let me tell you that right now. You're not even going to be able to move around, let alone try to clean up anything. This is ridiculous. And the, and the little baby, like I said, didn't ask, didn't deserve this. None of this. Didn't ask for this, didn't deserve this. And the 19 year old grown woman mother need to get her behind, lock the hell up if she keeps obstructing. She should not be obstructing and interfering with nothing else moving forward. No more. This is not about you showing love and support to your 19 year old grown daughter. This is about you showing how narcissistic the both of you can be. If you going to show your child love, teach them right from wrong. Teach them responsibility. Teach them that this isn't the way to go. Tell her you tried to discard my grandson. You are going to pay for that. I love you and I, I want things to work out well. But the reality is you were pregnant, you gave birth, and you tried to lie and hide it, and then you put the baby in a trash can. You're going to have to answer to this. Because mother to mother, this is not how we do. That's what you can say to your 19-year-old grand, your old uh, grown adult child. Mother to mother, this is not how we do. You were well aware that you were in the process of giving birth the moment you start feeling this baby come out. Even if she wanted to lie about the pregnancy and all this other stuff, to which it's hard to really say that now because she got a whole lot of classmates that's ready to see here and tell the truth about it. You can't call all these kids that's coming out and coming forward. You can't call all of them a liar because it's going to get to the point where it's going to be overwhelming. And many of them are going to be like, I'm not lying. It, it, it's it, you can't lie about you, it, too many. All these kids can't start lying about the same thing, especially when you can't even be honest in the hospital room when you went from lying about being pregnant, tried to deny being pregnant, and then defy science and act as if a lot of the actual blood test could not reveal that. Then you went from. Well, the baby wasn't breathing. It wasn't breathing. So you lied about being pregnant. But then because DNA and science is a thing. And it proved that you were pregnant. Then when you get the baby and they discover the baby in the trash can. Oh, well, it wasn't breathing. I'm sorry. She just lied from one lie to another lie to another lie. And all, all of them lies were stupid and dumb. They were just dumb and stupid lies. Just back to back to back to back. Habitual liars do that. Sometimes habitual liars lie to the point where they believe their own lies. This is where you as a mother say, mother to mother, you have to pay the price for that. 
If it means your little behind finna go to jail or go to prison or go through this trial and whatever happens with the evidence, let it go where it may. You, you got to let that happen. Because that's how parents teach their kids about responsibility. This is your grandson that she put in a trash can. You should feel some type of way about that unless you yourself don't have a soul either. You should feel some type of way, woman. And it doesn't come off like you do. You, you don't care about the baby at all. It, it, it's almost like, were you an accomplice? And I'm curious to know if you were an accomplice to her trying to cover all this up. Because maybe you thought this would be embarrassing for you. You weren't embarrassed about your 19-year-old having sex and unprotected. But yet, you, you you embarrassed about her being pregnant and having a baby. I, were you uh, a, a co-conspirator in covering this all this up? Somebody need to be putting y'all both on a lie detector test. Both of y'all need to be polygraphed. I hope the prosecutor DA makes them get a polygraph test. As a matter of fact, prove to us that you weren't lying and take a polygraph. Take a polygraph. Yeah, that'd be the first thing I would try to do if I want to prove my innocence. Put me on a polygraph. I mean, I'm just saying. Polygraph me. Put the 19-year-old and her mama on a polygraph and make them take a polygraph test. Make them take a lie detector test. Because this is, this is enough. This is happening way too often and being reported from the state of New Mexico. Maybe I should pass some legislation where all of them must be uh, polygraphed to determine if they're lying to tell the truth. At least it'll give you a head start, even if they're not 100%. I mean, I understand they're not. It's, you know, that kind of goes without saying. I understand the polygraphs are not always 100%, but it'll help you give some premise, some background information. Help you to know when, when they really lying like hell. And lies, it's stupid lies. It just tells, she just told dumb lies. Like it was not even creative. You're not even trying. And then the mother is just kind of like, yeah. What is she being charged with? Murder. Murder. And you should be charged with obstruction. Girl, both y'all need to kick rocks. Okay, I'm done ranting and venting.